Urban sky photography is becoming very popular and practical for a wider range of people around the world because of new generation of cameras, digital cameras with higher sensitivity, essential for low light environment. Some photographers use their camera on a fixed tripod for short exposures of night sky. Some others who are aiming for Faint objects in the sky use tracking mounts. Those mounts could be from large equatorial mounts designed for large telescopes to the smallest portable star trackers like Polari by Wixen, which is as an accessory for a DSLR camera and could be used and taken by a photographer to anywhere during a trip. Polari complete package comes with a tripod which includes a special design elevator with hand grip to make polar alignment and balancing better. Polari tripod is fairly fine for a camera with a wide angle lens but it's a lightweight tripod made for travelers with ultimate portability. If you consider using heavier lenses or cameras, try a steadier photo tripod and larger ball heads, of course. Polari can be used on any standard photo tripod using two heads instead of the single usual head on the tripod. The tracker body comes between the two heads. The first one helps you to tilt Polari to adjust latitude. This head is not necessary to be ball head. The second one holds the camera and comes on the rotating mount of the tracker. This needs to be a ball head so you can point the camera to any direction and level the horizon in your view. Polari standard tripod comes with two ball heads so it's all ready to go. The main purpose of Polari is to enable you to do longer exposure photos of the sky with a spectacular starry sky without recording star trails or the motion of the sky. But in order to use any star tracker mount, we need to first align the tracker rotation axis with the earth rotation axis, simply by pointing the tracker toward the celestial pole. You can start this by opening the embedded compass on the back side of Polari to find the north or south if you're in the southern hemisphere. Continue with leveling the tripod, rotating Polari to north and tilting it to a degree that the latitude marker on the side of Polari matches with your location latitude. Your latitude tells how high is the celestial pole in the sky above you. For example, if you're near the equator, the pole is near the horizon and in the polar regions, it's overhead in the sky. When you turn on the tracker, the latitude marker is dimly illuminated so you can read it at darkness. The celestial pole in the northern hemisphere is marked by famous star Polaris. Look through the polar finding hole in Polari body and move the tracker until the polar star appears in the hole which has about 9 degrees field of view. It's better to point it in the middle of the hole for better accuracy this makes alignment one step further and it's accurate enough for quick wide-angle shots. If you attach an empty tube, like a pen tube, to the hole, the longer distance of your eye from the polar hole makes a smaller field of view and therefore a bit more accurate aligning. But for ultimate aligning, the polar finder optional accessory is needed, which will be explained later in this video. When you do a starscape imaging with only a camera on a tripod, a fixed tripod. 
And using a wide-angle lens, you're usually limited to 15 to 30 seconds of exposure to make the stars still pinpoint and not trailed. Longer exposures shows the rotation of the Earth, in fact, the rotation of the sky as we see it from the ground. Uh, to stop this, we use the Polari or similar tracking mounts. And uh, there are several options for this on Polari tracker. One option is just this star mode, which is the sidereal tracking mounts. It's the equal speed of the rotation of the Earth, and that, therefore it just fixes the stars in your point of view, of course, after you have polar aligned uh, the tracker. You have another speed, which is only half the speed of uh, sky in motion. So this doesn't follow the stars in the same speed of the rotation of the Earth. So what is the use of this? This is the secret mode for landscape astrophotographers or starscape imagers. For example, when you're using your wide-angle lens, your limit of exposure because of trailing the stars is 20 seconds. But when you're using this mode of sidereal tracking, you can go for as long as your accuracy of polar alignment allows and also your limit of exposure on digital cameras. So um, we can go, for example, 40-50 seconds, but then you realize your landscape is completely blurred because of motion of the tracking mount. If I put it at the half sidereal mode, then I can do, instead of 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and stars are much more, sky is more spectacular, and at the same time, the landscape is not that much blurred to realize. Both the moon and the sun move across the sky at a bit different speed than the stars. Therefore, there are also other tracking modes on Polari. The sun icon on the dial mode is best for images of the sun when you need to track it for a long time. Such as in a solar eclipse, Polari is an ideal compact device for eclipse chasers who are always limited with equipment size on travels around the world to photograph solar eclipses. The moon icon is useful to keep the moon at the center of the image during a lunar eclipse, for example. The eclipse complete phases take several hours. For short minute long exposures, the difference between sidereal, solar or lunar modes is not really noticeable. So the most commonly used modes of Polari is the star icon for general wide field photography of the sky or half a speed for landscape astrophotography. To start working with Polari, find dark location, preferably far from cities out in nature and choose a night when bright moon is not in the sky. Preferably use a digital SLR camera, although Polari works for film cameras and any compact cameras too, but their performance in low lights are far from DSLR cameras. Your camera setting needs to be on manual, both the shutter speed and lens aperture, as well as the ISO, which is generally known as the camera sensitivity. It's also best to focus the lens manually either by taking few pictures and fine-tuning the focus, or live view, which is a function available on all the newer DSLR cameras. You are able to see the brighter stars and planets on your screen live view, especially when digitally magnifying it 5 or 10 times. Remember three golden numbers to begin starscape imaging. Use ISO 1600, set shutter speed to 30 seconds or so, and lens aperture at f2.8. You can try longer exposures for deeper images of the sky. Don't forget to shoot night escape images in RAW to save all the data needed for better processing, so better to avoid JPEG saving. An advantage for a small portable tracking mounts like Polar is that you can have it as an accessory for your DSLR camera always with you on trips. So that gives you the option whenever you find dark skies in a location, you have this option to turn your digital camera to a sky imaging device.
Polaris Star Tracker is not designed for telescopes. It's for cameras, either digital SLR cameras or compact with various lenses. So it has the wave limit of about 3 kilograms. That gives you a wide range of views for many kinds of cameras, many kinds of lenses. An interesting accessory made for Polari is the optional polariscope. It makes polar alignment much more accurate. Longer exposure photos up to several minutes made by telephoto lenses record stunning details of the deep sky. If you're interested to capture such images of the Milky Way, nebulae and star clusters, the polariscope is necessary to precisely find the celestial pole. This finely designed Wixen scope goes through a Polari body and simply gets fixed with an embedded magnet. There are three rings on the scope to determine your time, date and also your time difference from the country's standard time, also known as the meridian offset. For example, if your standard time is 8 p.m., but you are at the eastern region of the country, about 10 degrees of longitude off the main meridian of the country, set this scale at 10 degrees east. Remember to level the polar scope at the end using the bubble level on the scope. Some minor inaccuracies in all these settings does not really affect the result as Polari is not made for high magnification telescopes. The North Celestial Pole is not exactly Polaris. The pole is off for about 1 degree, which is the reason to use Polariscope. Place Polaris along the years mark in the Polariscope. If you find it difficult to see the numbers at dark, shine a dim red LED flashlight to the polariscope's front lens. Since you have already rotated the scope for the time and date setting, the celestial pole should be now right in the center. After polar aligning, you can move the upper ball head to point your camera to any direction. But remember, if you move the lower base ball head or change the position of the tripod, then the mount needs to be realigned. To do polar aligning precisely, reading Polari manual would be very helpful too. Another optional accessory is polar meter that comes on the hot shoe mounting place on the top of Polari body. The more accurate compass, angle meter and bubble level on this little device helps you quickly find the north and set the latitude as well as leveling the mount to the horizon. Operation of Polari in the Southern Hemisphere is possible and easy to do. It's a bit more tricky to find the South Celestial Pole as there is no bright polar star to mark it. The prominent figure of the Southern Cross is the best guide to find the pole. Use a map like this from Polari Manual to accurately polar align the star tracker. Before using the tracker in the southern hemisphere, remember to open the battery compartment and adjust the little but important NS switch. The sky in the southern hemisphere rotates in the opposite direction, as well as the tracker. The activation of southern tracking mode is smartly shown on Polari by changing all the red lights on the tracker to green.